speaker will be Lindsay Milgram. All right, can everyone hear and see me? Yep, perfect. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Corey. So my name is Lindsay Milgram and the title of my project is Parvalbumin axons may be more susceptible to demyelination. I'd like to thank the entire Hughes lab, specifically Ethan Hughes and Clara Backmeister, as well as the Department of Cell and Developmental Biology and the Modern Human Anatomy graduate pro excuse me, program. So myelin in the cortex specifically was previously thought to be uniformly distributed across all axons. But what we actually find is that myelin is distributed intermittently and in specific patterns um, based on the axon that is being myelinated. So we can see different uh, identifications of sheaths in intermittent myelination. So here is a terminal sheath, a continuous sheath, and an isolated sheath. And all of these sheaths are associated with nodes or heminodes. So here we see a node or a node of Ranvier and it's bordered by two myelin sheaths and paranodal proteins. So here between two myelin sheaths, we would see a node. A heminode conversely would be located at the end of a terminal sheath or on either end of an isolated sheath. So here again is a heminode. And it's at these heminodes and nodes that we find sodium channels, which along with myelin sheaths are major players in action potential propagation. So in the cortex, most of the myelin, in fact, almost half of all the myelin in the cortex comes from this specific neuron. This is a parvalbumin positive or PV positive interneuron. They're very fast spiking GABAergic interneurons that modulate neuronal networks. So not much is known about demyelination at the axon specific level, especially in diseases like multiple sclerosis. So the aim of this project was to demyelinate mice and observe the total myelin patterns in the cortex, as well as patterns of myelination on these PD positive interneurons. And we suspected that because these interneurons make up about half of all the myelin in the cortex, that a lot of the myelin left over after demyelination would persist on these neurons. So in order to do this, we fed mice a cuprazone diet, which um, attacks the oligodendrocytes, which are the cells responsible for myelin production in the central nervous system. So the first thing we wanted to do was just make sure that cuprazone diet does actually work. So on the left here, we are looking at the superficial cortex of a control mouse, and on the right, the superficial cortex of a cuprazone mouse. In blue, you see myelin, and in pink, you see those perinodal proteins that flank both heminodes and nodes. And in this cuprazone or demyelinated mouse, you can appreciate that there is much less dense myelination. So cuprazone does, in fact, work. So the next thing we wanted to do was look at the distribution of sheaths. So this would be those continuous isolated and terminal sheaths. And in control mice versus cuprazone mice, we found no significant difference in the distribution of myelin. So the pattern stays relatively the same. Next, we wanted to look at the effect of demyelination on sodium channel localization. So here on the left most um, superior, or excuse me, upper panel, we see a node and down here we see a heminode. So this would be a continuous sheath on top and a terminal sheath on the bottom. Now in the NavPan panel, we see a present sodium channel on top, but on the bottom we see the absence of sodium channel or no sodium channel localization. And what we found when looking at sodium channel localization, the sheaths associated with present sodium channels weren't significantly affected in demyelination, but the sheaths associated with absent sodium channels, specifically at nodes, um, seem to decrease with demyelination. So once we found some sort of general trends, we wanted to look at PV axons specifically. So here in a control mouse, you can see that the PV positive myelin sheaths do make up about half of all the myelin in the cortex. And in the demyelinated mouse or the cuprazone treated mouse, the PV positive myelin sheaths were significantly decreased. Um, and that's in total percentages. So to confirm that, we looked at sheets per 100 microns. And you can again see that in PV positive sheets, there's a significant decrease in the cuprazone mouse. But in PV negative sheets, there wasn't really a significant change. So again, looking at those distributions of sheets in continuous, isolated, and terminal um, sheets, we found that PV negative sheets, again, there wasn't really a significant difference. So that distribution remained the same. But in PV positive sheets, there was a shift in the distribution specifically allocated to terminal myelin sheets on PV axons. 
And then looking back at the absence of sodium channels, because we found significance there um, over the total population, we looked at PB negative sheets associated with absent sodium channels, and there wasn't really a significant decrease either at nodes or heminodes. But in PB positive axons, these sheets associated with absent sodium channels, both sodium channels at nodes and heminodes were significantly decreased. So the main takeaways from this are that um, the total distribution of myelin is not really affected by demyelination. However, demyelination does seem to affect the distribution of myelin sheets on PV axons. And specifically PV axons, excuse me, PV myelin sheets associated with absence of sodium channels may be more susceptible to demyelination and PV interneurons as a whole may be more susceptible to demyelination. So the thought here is that PV axons are such fast spiking, um, high energy demanding neurons that perhaps the myelin sheets associated with those axons are under such high stress that they might be more susceptible to demyelination. And PV interneurons um, with myelin sheets that are not associated with sodium channels, maybe those myelin sheets aren't directly involved in action, action potential propagation, but maybe something more like um, metabolic support to those neurons. And maybe that's not as critical of a myelin sheath to maintain in demyelination. Thank you very much. Any questions? Great job, Lindsay. That was really cool. Uh, we have some time for one question uh, for Lindsay here. So uh, why did you focus on PV neurons, these pair of al albumin? Yeah, so they're very fast spiking um, GABAergic interneurons. So in the cortex, there is a uh, propensity for hyper excitability in pyramidal neurons. So these PV axons um, kind of like tamp that down and control hypercorrelation. And they're also preferentially myelinated during neurodevelopment. So we thought that maybe those axons would be um, or the myelin on those axons would be preferentially maintained in demyelinating diseases like multiple sclerosis. Great. Unfortunately, we got to keep moving on, stay on uh, schedule here. So thanks again, Lindsay.